In this video, I'm going to show you the Reaper pattern, which stands for Request Endpoint Response. And this is a pattern where you organize your APIs around endpoints instead of controllers. You will see that it's closely related to vertical slice architecture. And I'm going to show you two libraries that you can use to implement your API endpoints. This is your typical MVC style controller, which holds together multiple methods each representing an API endpoint. The methods are decorated with HTTP attributes to represent the HTTP verbs that will be used for these API endpoints. The cohesion between these endpoints is really low and other than the dependency on the I sender to be able to send queries and commands, they don't have anything in common. And this is a typical symptom of API controllers. The good thing here is that these endpoints are already thin because they just create a command or a query object and send that to generate a response. So what does the Reaper pattern propose to improve on this design? As I mentioned at the start, the Reaper pattern stands for request endpoint response. And this is typically the only thing you care about when developing HTTP APIs. You have your API request, which could be your route parameters or a JSON body. You have your endpoint, which handles this request and produces a respective response. So the Reaper pattern proposes that you embrace an API endpoint as the fundamental building block of your APIs instead of having controllers. So let's see how we're going to apply this pattern into our project and slowly deprecate our controller implementation. What I'm trying to achieve with the Reaper pattern is to have one file represent one endpoint instead of having a controller which represents many endpoints inside. So a simple way you could do this without any libraries is to create a new class that's going to be, for example, the create order endpoint and I can inherit from controller base the same as I'm doing in the actual controller and then I can just take this endpoint along with the dependencies I can fix the constructor name and I can fix the method name let's just call it handle and now I need to specify a route for my endpoints so I'll just going to say API orders and this is all that I need to represent my endpoint class which is going to expose our respective HTTP post endpoint. But the downside to this approach is that I don't have a uniform way to define my API endpoints. This method name could be different for each of the API endpoints. And what about request and response objects? How do I document those? So there are a few libraries that help you solve this problem and I'm going to show you how to use them. The first library that we're going to explore is called API endpoints. This is an open source library and if you visit the API endpoints GitHub page, you can see some general information and some getting started guides to get you on your way with using API endpoints. I'm going to show you how to apply this library right now, but I'm just noting that there's a lot of useful information on their GitHub page directly. The first thing I'll need to do is to install the API endpoints library. So I'm going to look for the NuGet package and I'm going to install the Ardalus API endpoints library. With the library installed, I can go back to my endpoint, which is the create order endpoint. And how you define an API endpoint is using one of the endpoints base classes. You can choose between the synchronous or the asynchronous version of an endpoint. I'm going to go for the async one. And then what you can do is specify if your endpoint should have a request or no request. If you don't want a request, you're going to say without request but I want to have a GUID argument as my request parameter. So I'm going to say with request, and then I'm going to specify if this has a response or not. So let's say that I want this to have an action result. So I'm going to say with action result. And now this is going to complain that I need to implement the missing members. So let's generate what is this missing member. And this will be the handle async method. So this library gives me an API to define my API endpoints, say what type of request and what type of response they have. And it also exposes a single handle async method for me that I'm going to implement. So let's make this asynchronous. I'm going to move this implementation into the handle async method and I can get rid of all of this. And how do I get the customer ID? Well, this is my request, but if I want this to be bound to a query parameter called customer ID, I need to decorate this with a from query attribute. And then I'll say, this is the customer ID. 
by assigning to the name property. So let me say customer ID. And then this is going to be functionally equivalent to the previous endpoint that I had. Now I can go ahead and take this endpoint and move it into a separate file. And what I'm actually going to do is to completely split the controllers from the endpoints. So let's name this the endpoints. And I'm going to create a new folder inside that's going to contain my orders endpoints. And let's move the create order endpoint into its new location. So now we're implementing the request endpoint response pattern where we have one file, which is the create order file, representing a single HTTP post endpoint that is responsible for creating a new order in our system. I'm going to comment out the existing endpoint in the controller to prevent any route conflicts. And let me show you how to migrate another endpoint. Let's for example, take the add line item endpoint. So I'm going to create a new class inside of my endpoints folder, and let's call this the add line item. So again, I'm going to start with my endpoint base class, and I'm going to choose an async endpoint. What is going to be the request this time? Well, if I look at my controller action, I have two distinct arguments. One is the identifier, which is coming from my route, and the second is the add line item request, which is coming from the request body. So I have to create a new type that's going to represent this request, and let's call this the add line item API request. I'm going to define two properties inside. One is going to be my order ID coming from my route. And I need to say this by specifying the from route attribute. And if the name of my property is different to the route argument, I can also specify which name it should be bound to. And then I need to take care of the existing add line item request. So let's specify this as another property. Let's call it request. And this one will be bound from my request body. So I'm going to say from body. And this is how I define my endpoint request. So let's specify this here, add line item API request. And I'm going to say with action result. So let's generate the handle async method. One more thing I need to do here in order for all of this to work is to decorate the add line item API request with from route. And then it's going to properly bind the order ID from the route and the request from the request body. Let's take the HTTP put attribute here and place it on my handle async method. And I'm going to add the missing part of this route, which is API orders. And then I can take the implementation from here, paste it into my endpoint, which I need to make asynchronous. Then I'm missing my iSender from mediator. So let's inject this from the constructor and I'm going to fix the arguments here. So this will be the request order ID and the other ones are going to come from the request property on my request object. So let me paste those in. An interesting thing you can do in Visual Studio is to move your request types into their own files and I can name this file the add line item request with a dot in between and then it's going to become nested under my endpoint class. You can see there's a bit of a learning curve here with how you define your requests and responses and how to properly bind them into your request objects. But other than that, this is more or less identical to a controller and the benefit being that you can now define individual endpoints in separate files. This is the general direction that ASP.NET Core is taking, especially with the introduction of minimal APIs, which are more or less similar to this, where you can just map a single endpoint and define your request and response types. I also want to point out a really cool implementation detail of this library, which is fluent generic types. So if you were scratching your head with how I'm specifying my types here with a request and with an action result, let's take a look at the implementation of the endpoint base async class. So you can see that this is actually a static class, and it also has a static class nested inside, or rather two static classes. So there's a with request generic static class, and there is a without request static class. The generic with request static class now exposes a set of abstract classes that define which kind of result your endpoints have. So here is the with result and the generic argument, without result, with an action result, and so on. So the idea here is that you're going to specify your endpoint base async, which type of request it has, and then finally, what is the result? And the abstract classes define a set of handle async methods, which is the method that we were implementing in our API endpoint. 
This was something very unique that I haven't seen before until running into this library. And you will also notice that all of the abstract classes implement the endpoint base class, which is nothing else than a controller base class with an API controller attribute. So at the end of the day, what the API endpoints library allows us to do is to use controllers to define endpoints in a single file. And now I want to show you another library that you can use to implement the Reaper pattern and it's called Fast Endpoints. Fast Endpoints is an alternative to minimal APIs and MVC style controllers, and you can use it to implement the Reaper pattern. Here's a quick example where you define a request, a response, and your endpoint. You use the base endpoint class to define your API endpoint, and then you can specify which type are your request and response objects. You can configure the endpoint route and any authorization rules, and inside of the handle async method, you implement your endpoint body. So it's more or less similar to the API endpoints library, except it uses minimal APIs under the hood. I want to show you some benchmarks, so I'm going to navigate to the benchmarks page, and here you can see how fast endpoints compares to minimal APIs and MVC style controllers. You can also see the results of some load testing. In general, it's very similar in performance to minimal APIs. Fast Endpoints is only 1,000 requests per second slower than minimal APIs, but it has 35,000 more requests per second than controllers, which makes it a significantly more performant option. And now let's see how we're going to use it. First, I need to install the Fast Endpoints NuGet package. So let's look for this library. Let's install the latest version. And now I want to deprecate my get summary endpoint and implement it using the fast endpoints library. So let's create a new endpoint class here. Let's call it the get summary, or I'm actually going to call it get order summary. And let's see what I need to do to implement this with fast endpoints. The entry point is the endpoint class. There's a non-generic and a generic version where I can specify my request and response types. I want to show you how to define a request which you can bind from the route. So let's say I create a get order summary request object. And inside of it, I want to define just one property, which is going to be a GUID representing an order ID. If I want to reference this in my route as just an ID, I need to decorate this with bind from and say what I'm binding to. So let's say I want to bind from an ID parameter in the route. This is how I would achieve this. So let me specify this as my request and the response is an order summary object. So let me specify that and add a using statement. And now I can configure my endpoint. So I need to override the configure method. And let's say that this is a get endpoint. So I'll say get. And now I can define my route. So this will be API orders, specify my order ID from the route, and then I'm going to say summary. I can say that this allows anyone to see it. So I'm going to say allow anonymous, and then I need to override the handle async method. So let's make this asynchronous. And here you can see the get order summary request. So let's implement this using mediator. I'm going to inject the I sender from the constructor and I'm going to use the implementation that I have here. So let me grab the query and I'm going to add this in the handle async method. I'm going to store the result of the query into a parameter. Of course, I need to pass the order identifier from my get order summary request object. And then how do you return a response using fast endpoints? So let's say if order summary is null for some reason, I can await a send not found async method. And this will return a 404 not found response from this endpoint. Otherwise, if the order summary is not null, then I can say, for example, send OK async to return a 200 OK response, and I can pass in my order summary object. Alternatively, you can set the value of the response property and just assign the order summary value. I personally prefer being explicit, so I would use the send OK async overload and then specify my order summary. And you can also move your request objects into separate files and I can nest them under my endpoint class by just specifying a dot here. So let me show you one last example where we're going to migrate the remove line item endpoint using fast endpoints. And this is the last remaining endpoint in our orders controller. So let's create a new class. Let's call it the remove line item. I'm going to create a request object straight away. So remove line item request, and it's going to have two properties on it. One is going to be the order identifier. So let's call it the order ID. And the second is going to be also good, 
only representing a line item id so let's call it the line item id i need to say how i'm binding these values so this one will come from the id in the route and this one will come from the line item id so let's move this into its own file which i'm going to nest under my endpoint class now if i go back to my endpoint i can say that this is an endpoint i'm going to say that this will use the remove line item request and now i can configure my endpoint so let's override the configure method this is a delete endpoint and the route is API orders, the order ID, and then line items with a line item ID in the route. I'm going to inject the I sender from mediator so I can send my command and I can take the implementation from the order controller. I'm only going to take the first two lines where I create a command and send it using mediator and here I need to override the handle async method. I'm going to add my two lines of code make this method asynchronous and I need to fix the argument. So this will be the request order ID. And then the second argument is going to be the request line item ID. I'm going to send the command with mediator, the same as usual. And I'm going to say send not found result async. This completes my implementation. And now I can comment out the last remaining endpoint and I've deprecated my orders controller and move all of these endpoints into API endpoints. I have to say, I'm definitely a fan of the Reaper pattern and the fast endpoints library, especially when I'm using the vertical slice architecture. And if you want to learn more about it, take a look at this video next, where I show you how to implement the vertical slice architecture from scratch. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.